No, I, I honestly believe that whenever you're doing anything, uh, that he who dies with the most stories wins. That's my, 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 my motivation for everything. Is there a story? What's the story? What's the experience? What can you get out of it? And I'm a collector of stories. And if I can't experience them firsthand, well, I'll try to experience them vicariously, or at least I'll write them down, document them, and tell other people those stories. My funniest stories I can't say as a publicist, which is so uh, surprising of me, because if you get a shot of Jägermeister in me, it all comes out. Um, the, the best story that I, that I, that I could share was um, we had Slash, ex of Guns N' Roses, when he had his Slash's Snake Pit. We, he was doing a, an opening tour with ACDC when Slash's Snake Pit album came out, and um, we were on the Don Valley Parkway and Gardner Expressway in Toronto, and we were late for the sound check, and he got so enraged with the traffic that he said, I'm getting out here, and this is like at, at you know, Gardner Expressway, maybe, you know, just before the ACC, but it was a good couple of blocks or whatever. And so he literally gets out of the car by himself. And he, I said, do you want me to come with you? And he said, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. And, um, you know, here's Slash with his hat and the glasses and the hair and the amp and his guitar and there's probably snakes all, all over all over him. And um, he's literally walking on the Gardner Expressway trying to get to a sound check, stopping, posing for pictures, like the great Jewish mensch that he is. You know, he's late for his sound check, but he still manages to thank the fans. And all I kept thinking is he's gonna get hit by a bus. He's gonna get hit by a bus. And so I ran after him and got, you know, he was about 10 or 15 minutes late, but. But he was one of the good ones, though, that's for sure. Uh, I went to, it was about six or seven years ago, I was invited to go to London to speak to Robert Smith of The Cure. And I get a call from the local record company. And it says, Robert will, is, will be ready for you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Meet us at Gatwick Airport near his home, and uh, we'll set up the interview. Oh, great. See you at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, no, no, no. Um, Robert gets up at 5 p.m. and works till 8 a.m. The interview is going to be at 2 a.m. Okay, so I get on the Gatwick Express, go out to the Hilton uh, Hotel at Gatwick Airport, I wait in a suite, and then somebody knocks on the door and says, it's your turn. So we walk down this dim hall, and the door opens to this other suite and closes behind me, and there's one light, a lamp, on in the corner with like a 25-watt light bulb. And it's completely dark, and I'm completely alone. And then this thing shuffles out from around the corner. The hair, the makeup, the high tops. Hello, my name is Robert. Well, no kidding. <laughs> it was it was the spookiest sort of thing. But he was a very it was very nice. It was very cool. But we conducted this interview in near darkness between two and three in the morning in a hotel suite at Gatwick Airport. Very very strange. You know, I managed Dan Hill as well, and uh, we had the number one record around the world. It's the only time I ever had such a big record. I mean, we had many other hits. Uh, some of them did were pretty good, and uh, you know, I'm not apologizing for it. But sometimes when we touch, it was like it's beyond a hit, a super hit. And uh, two things about that: I remember that record was selling 35,000 copies a day on its way to selling over two million singles. You know, and if you divide 35,000 into two million, you can see how many days it still takes that you gotta do that. I mean, it's actually phenomenal numbers. But we got asked, so we got this tour we're gonna do, the record sitting at number one in the US, just came out in England. You, you, your viewers might remember the phenomenally successful and important television show, um, a top of the pops in, in the UK. The only way we could do it and still be on the tour with Art Garfunkel was to take the Concorde. So uh, we ended up taking the Concorde and we flew over to England. It was like amazing, you know, they poured champagne all the way. And, you know, we're still all under 30. I mean, Dan would only be maybe 22 or something. I don't know how old I was, but it was under 30. And, we're on the Concorde and we're drinking champagne and eating caviar and, and uh, you know, so three, hour, three hours and 15 minutes to London. And we got there and we ended up getting to Tops of the Pops. 
And then the next day after doing it, we had to get back on the plane, fly back to Cleveland via New York, and do a show that same night. So in the morning we were in London, that evening we did the show in Cleveland with Art Garfunkel, and you know, I remember that extremely well.